Hey guys, we are in Santa Cruz, California. I love this spot. You can surf out here. We got natural bridges in the background and this is UC Santa Cruz sort of a extension where they do research for marine biology. That's why we got whale bones in the background. That's the, the Blix team. They came out with me so that I'd have a whole bunch of different versions of the Vika plus Flex. So that's the founder, Pontus. Um, Blix means lightning. It's like Swedish word. And then Vika means, I think, folding. And then Flex is kind of along the same lines. It's very flexible. You've got lots of different accessories. You can do a lot with this bike. I've actually categorized it as uh, commuting as well as like a folding traveling bike it does weigh about 54.4 pounds and that's as you see here like no racks or anything however it does have aluminum alloy 65 millimeter wide paint matched fenders gotta love that they're really nice the paint jobs on these are just beautiful we've got this rack here it's fairly custom you can see that there's like this fixed length support arm it's not one of those that has like a sort of a slide movement potential and, and I like that it just feels more purpose-built we've got a pannier hanger as well as a bungee loop and a yep child seat window on the back so you can put a child seat and carry them around of course we have integrated lights and I'll get to the details on those later but all in all I mean this is one of the most thoughtfully designed folding electric bikes that is still value priced in my opinion. These things are $16.99 and to have a bike that yes, it only comes in one frame size, but it, it has a telescoping sort of a stem support here. So you get an extra 30, 35 millimeters on that to, to raise and, and lower. And if you're someone who's a little bit taller, I think Keegan was on this one and it's a 400 millimeter seat post, 27.2 millimeter diameter. So you could you know, suspension post if you want to. To. Of course, we have a rigid fork. Very rarely do I see suspension forks on folding bikes. It just adds weight and there really isn't that much room for travel, especially when you have fenders and stuff. So I'm a fan of this. It's a steel fork and then we have a steel chain ring, but otherwise everything else on this is aluminum alloy. It's designed to be lightweight, but still fairly stiff. We see this extra tubing right here. It's almost like a mini top tube and it reduces frame flex, kind of an oval shape on this main tube and kind of a gusset right here. So that's all designed to make the bike stiffer and it's great because you see this sort of head tube badge right here with the Blix B those three bolts you can remove that and put on one of these racks and I mean how cool is this so this is the, the support rack and then we've got this optional basket which can be oriented lengthwise or horizontal like that it's the same basket back here you can mount that to the rear rack I love that they've got this thing rated up to 25 kilograms 55 pounds because sometimes I see like full size bicycles with like a 20 kilogram rated rack. So a lot of carrying capacity on this, a lot of the bags and stuff that they sell, they're branded to Blix. This thing can kind of roll up a little bit in the bottom. We got these cinch straps right here and they clip on to the rails. I, I'm actually a big fan of these ones right here. They look very professional. It kind of ties into the browns on the grips and the saddle. Sully Royale, we got a handle which is very handy if you're doing the folding of, of a bike like this. These are Velo brown, but they're ergonomic grips. They're not locking. They still do a pretty good job, been riding around and uh, they match fairly, fairly well. Maybe not quite perfectly, but a big fan of, of that kind of thing. Just again, the aesthetics on these bikes are great. A few things have changed on the bike since last time and really been improved. I mean, the whole frame's been updated and refined a little bit, but this stood out to me. So we have like a steel plate that's it, it acts like a nut. So we have 15 millimeter nut on the other side and you and you can kind of like crank that on. And this plate works with this magnet back here that has a little bit of flex in it, but that threads into the rear axle. Very cool to see. It's just more sturdy and probably stronger than the older version. I appreciate that. It's gonna keep the bike from kind of rattling loose. It's still a little bit of rattle because we have the folding stem and I'll show that in a minute, but I, I really like that they did that. They updated the controller on this thing, 11 amps continuous, 20 amps max, and it's sort of below and sort of inside of this slide mount for the battery. It's not a big box that used to be down here. So it's just a lot cleaner. And you'll notice that a lot of the cables are external on this bike, but they're wrapped really nice. And we have these good connectors right here. I think they said IP65 rating on all the displays and the different interfaces and stuff. That's nice because you might end up in a place where it's rainy or there's a little bit of water and you know, you want to keep this bike running well. It is electric 
Uh, so I definitely appreciate that. And then having the external wires just makes it a little bit more modular. When you're folding it, they're not inside the frame, potentially getting fit, like, you know, kind of bent or pinched. So great job there. And then even little things like this, the cable that goes from the display to the button pad is really short. It's not this huge wire that has to be twisted around or whatever. And they've made this modular. So on some of their full size bikes, like we see over there, I think that's the sole, you know, the handlebars wider. So they have a longer cable. It's a, it's a small thing, but it, it makes a, makes a difference. This all adds up to a really clean, beautiful experience, which I'm a fan of. We still have a seven speed drivetrain. This is Shimano Revo shift. It's got the optical window. It's pretty easy to twist and pretty intuitive. You don't have levers hanging down, which is nice. Again, if you fold it, it's nice to have things that aren't really hanging out in the open. Although we do have a derailleur here, Shimano Turney longer cage. So there's a little bit of potential if you're close to a curb or just obstacles that this could be bumped, but it's tucked in fairly well. Shimano Turney is like entry level, but it is a seven speed. I think that's part of what they do to keep this bike as affordable as it is. We still have a 14 to 28 tooth seven speed freewheel, not a cassette, but the gears work pretty well. I was pedaling around earlier, got up to 20 miles per hour, which is the top supported speed and it felt fine. And starting was still, still pretty good. You do get a bit of a mechanical advantage with a smaller wheel size. Here is the motor. This is Shengyi. It's rated at 500 watts, nominal. 50 newton meters of torque is the feedback that they gave me, and that makes sense. 12 gauge, extra thick spokes, fairly wide rims, which is nice, because these are larger tires. That's one of the big upgrades on this uh, new Flex model. So 20 by 2.4, and the 2.4 gives you some extra width for stability. You can ride off-road fairly comfortably, a little bit more cushion and it lowers the attack angle because the effective diameter is a little bit, it's a little bit taller. Love that. And then we've got this reflective sidewall stripe for safety, keep you visible. You are lower on this bike. So even though it has lights and stuff, it's nice to have just any extra visibility in my opinion. And they do have puncture resistant casing. These are CST tires. So very cool on that. Even though we don't have suspension, unless you add a suspension seat post, which they do sell, they have a thud buster option. Um, you know, you, you've got a pretty good PSI spread, 40 to 65. You can lower it down if you're a lightweight rider and get a little bit more cushion. Just love the way the fenders and everything look again and the headlight points where you steer as you're riding along. Uh, frankly, you know, I have this helmet here. Abus gave me this a number of years ago and I, I, I like it because it fits right, but it also has a light in the back. And so if you can have some lights or something up high if you're riding a lot, especially at night or in a city or something, they're doing a great job with those lights, but just something I want to point out. They added bottle cage bosses right there. Love that. And they're actually braze on, so they're outset a little bit. And when you, when you put the included bolts in all the way, you can still get the saddle all the way down. So again, a 400 millimeter seat post probably goes down to here. And so you can drop it all the way. This isn't a curved seat tube. I like that. That's a little thing. 52 tooth steel chain ring with a plastic guide. That's going to keep the chain from falling off, especially if you fold it, the bike ends up on its side or you're riding and you got pants like I do today or a dress or something. It's not going to touch the, the chain and get greasy or snagged. I definitely love these pedals. Welgo aluminum alloy platform. They do fold. You kind of push in and then pivot. Just makes the bike a little bit like narrower when you're trying to put it in a compact space. I have listed the length, the width, the height, the standover, and the folded dimensions back at electricbikereview.com. I try to measure everything independently just so you have a kind of a reference point. It's fairly consistent. I think they offer up to 270 pounds of, of max weight on this bike between your cargo and the rider. So that's pretty good for a folding bike. And the joint still has this locking point. There's the other joint. I'm gonna do the folding in a second, but I wanna make sure we cover the rest of, of the bike first. Fairly short stem, so you're not doing a whole lot of extra reaching and leaning forward. Raise that a little bit if you need to. Maybe let's talk about the brakes. So we've still got these Tektro levers with the rubberized grip. Very nice because it keeps them from getting really cold and it gives you a little bit of vibration dampening. We got an integrated bell, which I love. It's a friendly, cheerful signal. 160 millimeter rotors, front and rear with mechanical actuation. So, you know, mechanical brakes do require a little bit more hand effort, especially for the rear brake. 
and you can see how this is angled up so water could condensate on this um, wire and then maybe drip in there and dust can get in there and stuff so it's it's a minor thing and they've got to try to figure out how to position all this stuff it's not uncommon to see this setup that is one of the trade-offs on this bike it's mechanical brakes instead of hydraulic especially if you really load it up and stuff you just you know thankfully they have the larger four finger levers so you can really bear down on that if you need to and they have barrel adjusters so you can kind of adjust those on the go as the brake pads wear down thankfully both brake levers do have motor inhibitors so anytime you actuate that it's going to stop the motor power like immediately and it'll activate the rear light so it goes bright and this thing why don't i go ahead and just boot the bike up here we hold the m button and the display comes to life pretty quickly, but that's only if the battery pack has been turned on, okay? So we, we do have it in the on position. If you were storing it for a long time or shipping it or something, you can turn it to that off, and that's gonna be, uh, it's just gonna make it a little bit more stable and it won't drain over time. The best idea for batteries like this, lithium ion batteries, by the way, they're using Panasonic cells, which are very nice, 18650. The best idea is to store them in a cool, dry location uh, you know, try to avoid dropping it, that kind of thing. I'm gonna just show you the lights here. So if we hold the up arrow for a second, you can see the light icon illuminate. 27 little LEDs along the back. So it's fairly visible and maybe a little blocked from this side, but the light actually curves a bit. And then depending on the bags you have, we can see how the bags might block it a little bit. So these bags are designed not to go too low and, you know, interfere with the derailleur and stuff, but they do, they do come back a little bit. Just keep that in mind when I talk about safety and stuff. So wanted to point that out. Anyway, we have the brake light, which is very cool. Pull the brake there. And then the headlight, a Shendo 40, really bright. And it does point where you steer, as I mentioned. Just a little low, just something to keep in mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the display because I wanna show you the battery since that is one of the things that's really been improved. So 54.4 pounds on the bike, 7.2 pounds on the battery, about 8.8 .8 pounds on the motor back there. So we unlock this like that. And then we can kind of slide this up and if you're like me and you've got the seat high enough, you don't have to mess with this. On the older model, they had sort of a flip up mechanism where the saddle could go like this, but it was just a lot looser. It didn't feel as like solid as this. So I'm, I'm fine with it. It feels like in most cases, you're gonna be able to get the battery off. There's that on off switch I talked about. Here's the charging port. You can charge it on or off the bike, which is wonderful. And I think I put the charger up in this basket. We got like yoga mats and beach towels and everything. Look at how cute this charger is. I love this thing. It only weighs like 1.2 pounds. Got the plug on that end, two amp. So it's probably gonna take, you know, five and a half, six hours to really fully charge, but just so light and compact, really easy to, you know, stuff that into your bag and take it along with you rather than trying to take an additional battery pack. The capacity on this is actually pretty good. It's a 48 volt, 12.8 amp hour. So with the new controller, again, 20, 20 amp peak, it, this thing is quite nice and it's just, it's just integrated more, right? So it's not in the battery, which means the batteries can be a little lighter, a little more affordable if you need a replacement, but it's not this huge box like before. And so the frame is just even more elegant. Yes, these are external batteries, but they blend into the bike and the weight is low, it's centered. It's kind of right where you'd want it, I, I think. I really feel like this is a great solution, especially for the price point. And then of course, on this side, as long as the battery is turned to that on position, you can press this little button and you get the LED readout. So that is very cool. The other cool thing about the bike is, you know, Blick still has the one-year comprehensive warranty, but they've got this new option, which is from a company called Clyde, where for 160 bucks, you get an additional year. So it's like two years of warranty coverage. And I think it's wear and tear as well as just like some of the mechanical stuff that could, you know, break over time. Or three years for 220, that seems like a pretty good deal. I hadn't actually seen that before. Okay guys, we moved the bike because we wanted to do like a little folding demo and we got Keegan over here helping out. So can you just yeah. take us through this? Sure. So you kind of got to flip this release up and make sure your pedals are in the right orientation. This latch opens like that. Cool. And then the bike folds just like that. There's a magnet closure there that's going to keep it closed and then 
little stand under the bottom bracket. That is great. And the, getting the pedals in the right place, that's like a big part of it. And then he's doing the final piece here, which is the handlebar. This is, you know, if you have like a bungee cord or a strap, there's a little bit of movement there. But the magnets, in addition to just sort of updating to the, the design, they, they removed quick release from the front wheels. So we have 15 millimeter nut and stuff, still 100 millimeter, you know, it's a nine millimeter axle, 100 millimeter hub spacing. Over here, 135 millimeter hub spacing with, I think it's like 18 millimeter nuts. But just having that be a little bit sturdier is great because I, you know, you don't want this thing like rolling all around. Um, it just feels like it's cleaner and I haven't seen too many companies modify that magnet interface. And I, I was told that the axles are now in line. So if you want to roll it around, maybe we can take the handlebar right. back up sure. and demo that. This is a really cool feature because the you bikes... You want to carry your bike when you're moving it around. Yeah, like maybe you're of. getting on a bus or something or walking yes. home. Look at that. Sure to, to move it around. That's you know, awesome. Yeah. And and the way he's doing it, you you have to kind of go that way. If you go the other way, the crank arms will turn and stuff. It becomes pretty obvious. I, I like going through bikes like this because there's so much attention to detail. And I've had access to all the guys at the at the company and been able to ask questions. Um, and it just really feels like things are done well. Even like the rack, you can take the rack off if you want to. Maybe you want to reduce some weight or something. You'd have to figure out something to do with the light, but there's a quick disconnect right there. They didn't just forget about that. You could take the fender off and leave the rack if you wanted. There's just, there's a lot more here. Just, just bring that handle up. Easier to lift the bike. Line that joint up. It comes together pretty quickly. Yeah, there you go. and there's the seat again. That's awesome. Thanks, man. Yep. So there we go. We're back up at the display. Hold that power button for a second. Lots of great information here. At the top, there's this energy bar. And even though it looks like there are 10 little ticks, they they drop in 20% increments. So it's really like five ticks, which is too bad. It'd be nice if there were 10% because it'd be a little bit more precise and you could know, you know how close you are to running out of capacity. The other thing is that this goes from left to right. So when you start running out, the remaining ticks would be over here. It's a, it's a kind of a counterintuitive thing. This is a king meter display. And in the center, we have like your current ride speed, zero miles per hour. If we press the M button, it cycles through to average speed and max speed. Down here, we have pedal assist. And when you boot the bike up, you're always starting in pedal assist level one. So down here, we've got a 12 magnet sealed cadence sensor. It's fairly reliable, compact, and durable. It's a nice part. I see it frequently. And when you're starting out with assist level one, the bike's not gonna get out of control. It's a lower speed, it's really smooth activation. However, the throttle gives you full power and it's a variable speed throttle. So the further you push it, the more power, the higher speed you can get. And I love that. Before, you were sort of capped depending on the level of assist that you chose. So now, even if you go down to zero, you can ride this thing, you know, pedal manually and then just activate that throttle anytime. The highest level of assist is five. That's gonna get your, your max speed. This ships at 20 miles per hour, but I think you can actually go a little faster if you go into the settings, which I'll show you in a minute. Down here we have odometer, but then if we press that M button, this is part of what cycles through again. So we get trip A, trip B, back to odometer. So the other secrets here are we hold up, we get the lights as we did earlier. If we hold down, we get walk mode. There we go. So, you know, two, three miles per hour, the bike will walk along with you. And again, that's really handy if maybe you got your pet or something back here and you're distracted and you don't want to tip the, the bike. I really just want to compliment this. Again, frame mounted front racks are my favorite because you can steer the bike without having that extra weight impact you're turning and, and even when you stop, a lot of times you stop and the, the fork kind of tips to the, the left towards the kickstand and you kind of dump the, the cargo out. So this is just, it's really well done. Keep in mind that your light's gonna be much less visible though. That's one of the trade-offs. Um, I don't know if, uh... hey Pontus, question for you, man. Um, so I, like when you've got a front rack like that, the light's a little bit more hidden. Do you have an extension where you can mount the light like to the front of the basket or is it just kind of as is? No, it, it is assisted, but we did look into it quite a bit, though. It, it should cover it pretty in a pretty good angle, as it is there. Yeah, you still so you still have some visibility. The challenge is if you mount it to the rack, then it doesn't point where you steer. And so, so you're just saying, basically, the, the headlight is as is. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, just curious sure. about that. So, you know, we're good on this. The other thing I want to compliment is the kickstand back here. 
See, it's mounted clear of that left crank arm, so you're not gonna get pedal lock. It's adjustable length, it's got a fairly large foot, so it doesn't sink in. Nice tab right there, just really good job. In fact, you know, this is what I'm talking about. If we walk the bike backwards, see that crank arm eventually would come around, and some bikes, it does pedal lock. Other bikes, they put the kickstand so far back that the, the stand is sticking way out. So this one's like perfectly positioned, in my opinion. They did a really good job. Um, yeah, so coming back to the display over here. The final piece is those settings. I'm probably excited to see what that is. So if we hold the up and down arrows together, it gives you three menus. So one is change from miles to kilometers. So that's units. If we press the M button here, we go to top speed, 32 kilometers per hour. We can lower it all the way down. I think like 12 miles per hour or something. Yeah, I think that was oh, 12 kilometers per hour. And then the highest is 40. So you know, you can you can go over 20 miles per hour with this bike if you were using this off-road or something. That is not how they ship it. Um, I, I just wanted to point that out because some people want to go a little slower. Other people have some off-road conditions or something, especially with these larger tires. It's kind of neat that they left that there. And then 20-inch. This is the wheel size, which you want to leave alone. These are 20-inch wheels. To get out of this menu, we hold the M button again, and there we go. So that that's it, that's the bike. I think it's a good chance to go and take a ride on this thing and show you what it's all about. Okay, so we do a little ride test here. We've got this pebbly section. I wanna see how the fenders and everything sound going off-road. Before we do that, I forgot to mention they actually still have the full-size USB type A charging port built into the side of the display. I think it's five volt and a full amp of power. So. You could charge your smartphone or maybe have a speaker or an additional light up here if you want to and really max out the safety. I appreciate that. Again, we start in assist level one, but the throttle is hot. So I, I might start that way. We'll just kind of ease into it. Really smooth. Whoa. Yeah, it's pretty peppy. And I think that has to do with the smaller wheel size. You, you, you know, there's, there's some good power here. I was actually riding uh, sort of on the bluffs and stuff earlier off-road and really enjoying the larger tire size. That's something a lot of companies are going to. This time I'm going to do pedal assist, maybe level three, and you can see how quickly it starts and stops. Pretty responsive. You can definitely hear the motor kind of doing the whine thing. It's pretty common, the planetary geared motor. You know, I think it gets the job done. I like that it's silver, it looks nice, kind of blends in with the rest of the bike. They've been very thoughtful on just basically all of the different components they've selected. You know, it's, it's really interesting. Oh, very responsive. And if you if you need to cut the motor power, you just pull the brake, no problem. Takes care of everything. These planetary geared motors, they freewheel efficiently, so you're not getting any drag. They tend to be lighter weight than like the, the gearless direct drive motors. It feels like the right decision for a folding bike like this. See the body position, pretty upright. I weigh about 135 pounds and I'm 5'9 with maybe like a 31 inch inseam. So I would probably raise the seat a little bit higher, but I kind of kept it low to, to do the pictures and stuff. Let's take it up to this level five. Almost got up to 20. There we go. This is what it's like to pedal at 20. Nice. I 
guys, I think that's about it. This has just been a ton of fun. Great to get to see all the different bikes with a bunch of accessories and meet with the team like this. I always have a, a blast riding on days like today. For the full written review, you can head on back to electricbikereview.com where I've got all the specs and stuff. I also have a comparison tool so you could look at like the last generation. Maybe you found one used or something and you're trying to debate spending the more money and buying a new one. Uh, there's also some forums and stuff and comments that I try to keep just really open so you can get feedback from an actual owner on how these things hold up over time. My goal is to just be objective and as transparent as possible so you find the right bike. But I really, I really do like this. They've done a great job. Um, I love you guys. Ride safe and we'll see you on the next one.